Okay, so to find the slope u went up three, and then you count it over five. That's uh, exactly what the slope is, right? You count out the rise and you count out the run. Okay. Um, so we we definitely can do that, and that is correct. Um, but we just want to probably re reiterate something that you heard before. Um, so what we want is the, the rise, the vertical change. Vertical change. Uh, or another way to say it would be the change in y, since y is the vertical component to these coordinates. We just want this vertical change. And what we're given is this vertical and this vertical. We take this distance and we take this distance off, take it out of there, then what's left is exactly the distance, the vertical distance between those two points. We take that, that distance right there, subtract two, then we'll have the, the vertical distance, the rise. If you want to find the run, another way to say that is the change in x. Okay. So that x is the horizontal. Change in x uh, is something we could also call the run. Heck, we use that same kind of an idea to find the horizontal change in two. Okay, why would we do six minus one? We've got, um, we've got this horizontal distance here, all the way from the y-axis to this point. And we've got this horizontal distance here. That's one, that's six. If we take this one away from six, we'll have the, the change in x, which is five. So if we do six minus one, so there we get our uh, three over five. So you get the basic idea. If you want to find the change vertically, you take the two vertical quantities and you find the difference. And if you want to find the horizontal change, you find the, the change uh, or the difference in the horizontal quantities. So I'm just going to give you another one and I want you to practice it. You can see it. I want you to um, try and do it by calculating it, do the, the actual subtraction there, and then uh, you can count it off as we did at the beginning of class. It's just to confirm that you did it correctly. Okay? Mm. So I So now we're going to ask, not who knows the slope, but I don't care if you know the slope, but who's got it, who used this, this subtraction way that we did back here? We did subtracted the y's and we subtracted the x's. Who's, who's done that and what that look like, Ildi? Um, I just, I got, um, oh, you want the answer. Like the process. I want the process. I, I First did, I took I this number and I did this. Well, I took negative 8. Okay, you took negative 8. I don't know if I did it right, but I'm pretty sure I did. And I got I subtracted negative I subtracted two, not negative two. You subtracted two, good. Yeah. Okay. And then for and then do I give you the answer? Well this is just uh well the the slope should be a fraction, right? What part of the fraction is this? The top part. The okay. Part. So what did you do for the bottom part? Um I took an eight and then I subtracted two. Eight minus two. 
There's something, a very common mistake was made here, which I'm sure he'll be orchestrated for our benefit, so that we could all uh, make sure that, that we don't make a practice of this. What, what is the mistake here? What's that? Oh. Yes. Yeah, I think we could we could give a little more detail to it. It's yeah. supposed to be rise over run. Okay, what do we have here? Run over right. Oh. Uh, okay, we can we can look at it that way for sure. Sorry. We got the. I'll get you. Now think about it. <laughs> Should be rise over run. I'm sure whoever chose these words, the first person to to express slope this way, chose the word rise because it brings up what kind of a direction in the line. Uh -huh. Up and down, right? Yeah. Okay. And which of these is up and down? Which of these two things is an up and down kind of a thing? The second one, the Y one. This one tells you that you've gone up two. So that's a vertical thing. If you want to know the change in the vertical, the rise, then we need to be doing the Y values, right? So here's our X values. That's not what I want. So X values. Here are our Y values. So we should just switch them around. That's a little better. I didn't write the whole path. So 8 minus 2 gives us 6. Or negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. Or negative 3 over 5. a picture this time, and uh, once again, just some practice. Different and, and, and that kind of confusion doesn't happen. So let's see how we do it. Okay, now I'm going to work this out myself, and I'm going to make a mistake on purpose, and I want you to catch what that mistake is, and then we'll discuss why it's a mistake. What, what information would that give us if we did that? Okay, so just take minus 4 over 5 minus 3, we get 3 over 2. No, no. This should be negative? Yes. Okay, well what, what mistake did I make that caused it not to happen that way? Okay, so putting the 7 minus 4, that was okay? Yeah. Couldn't it have worked if it did 4 minus 7? No. Anybody no. do 4 minus 7 and still get negative 3 over 2? So so Maybe you didn't, but you certainly could have. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll talk about what's important as we as we use this to find the slope. So if I do 7 minus 4, I should have done 3 minus 5, and that would have given me a 3 over negative 2, and it would have given me a negative 3 half slope, which is what it should have been. Okay. So let's look at a, a picture to see um, what's going on, how we're not finding what we're trying to find. see it's almost what it's supposed to be. It's almost uh, negative three halves. It's just somehow I worked it out so I didn't get a negative when I should have. All right. 
And uh, we'll use this picture to highlight what's important as we try to find the slope this way. So we go uh, 3, 7, which is there, and uh, 5, 4, which is So the slope, uh, one way to look at it, probably the main way to look at it, is if I'm at this point, say, at any point, how do I get to another point, another easy to find point? Okay. There's all these points in between, but the next easiest one to find is right here on a dot, right here at the crosshairs on the grid line. Um, we want to go down three, okay, so that's a negative thing, you go down, it's negative in the y direction, and you want to move to the right two. Or you want to move to the right two, that's positive, and down three, that's negative. Or if you start here, you want to go up three, that's a positive three, and to the left two, that's a, a negative move in the x direction. Okay. So what I did, um, by taking seven minus four, I'm telling myself, what, what's the difference in the, the vertical between this, this vertical and this one, okay? This larger one minus the smaller one. So seven minus four gives me that three. But when I took five minus three, see I started with seven minus four, when I took five minus three, now it's more like I'm at this point and I'm trying to figure out how to get uh, over to this point. I'm finding the difference between this point and this point horizontally. If I start at this point, and I want to get down to this point, uh, this needs to be, say, my point number two and my point number one. It doesn't really matter which one I call them. But if I want to find the change uh, vertically from here to there, then I need to find the change uh, horizontally from here to there. Okay? I'm going to start here. I need to end there. So. If I do seven minus four, that's the vertical change uh, from here to there. And then I need to do three minus five, uh, the change from here to there. Um, so if you look at the setup here, you see the point three seven and the point five four. So these need to come from the same point. And so do these. Um, and in general, you can say there was a, a formula for this. We call the first point, and here's another point we can call it the second one. So here's the x from the first point and the y from the first, or the, sorry, the second point and the y from the second point. Here's the x from the first point and the y from the first point. If we start with point two, we need to take y from the second point minus the y from the first point over the x from the second point minus the y from, or the, the x. Um, the first one. That gives us our slope. And I'd be somewhat surprised if you'd never seen that before. I'm sure you've seen that before. Is that correct? You've seen that y2 minus y1 or y2 minus x1? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, just a couple of things we've said already, but maybe you didn't catch. It doesn't matter which point comes first. Which, one, which point you call point one or point two. Um, it'll all come out the same in the end. If we go back to this example, instead of seven minus four over three minus five, if I do four minus seven over five minus three, this one gives me three over negative two, which is negative three halves. 
And this one gives me negative 3 over positive 2, which is also negative 3 halves. Either way, it's the other one is negative, but you still get a negative slope. Good information to answer that. Answer that question. What was your average speed between two and five hours? We got our average speed between two and five hours. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Now, how did you do that? Oh, you went the other way. We did uh, 345 from 150. No? 345 minus 100. Okay. I misunderstood. All right, what'd you do with that? Divided by three hours? Why three hours? Five and two is three. You got 195 over three. That is 65 over one. Right. Well, if we write it like this, we can see we can think of it as y2 x2 y1 x1. If we were to Graph these points. Uh, simple, there's 150 and uh, 345 up here.
So looking at this way, we, we clearly see that there's 65 miles that we've gone in one hour, or on average in one hour we've gone 65 miles. But also this number, how is this number related to this line? Well, if you went like this, yeah. there would be a point right here. Probably. probably, I would say probably, 1 comma 65. And then we go right through there. We don't know for sure, because we don't know how fast we were driving those first two hours, but that sounds like a reasonable guess. OK. Um, all right, so there's one way to look at it. Let's say, uh, yeah? Um, <laughs> um, so you can say it that way. We can say if we were to draw it, if we were to go back this way, it's called extrapolation. This is where we have data and we've gone outside that data uh, and made predictions about what happened in the past and we made predictions about what happens in the future. Right? Because we're following this pattern, a certain slant of the line. What else, what else could we call that? slantiness of the line, the slope, right? So, so can we look at this as the speed uh, of, of our car? Or if we were to graph uh, the time versus distance of, of our trip, that would also be the slope of the line that represents uh, where we were at any given time. Okay. So the slope of a line is the rate of change. rate of change of the vertical thing, this was measured in miles, and this was measured in hours. <coughs> what, if, uh, what if we were driving faster? What would you say about this line? It'd be what? More angled in which direction? More angled up, maybe steeper. Yeah. Okay. So it have a, a steeper angle, and if we were driving slower, it'd be flat. Okay. That's. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna take this out of the book because I think it's kind of good. Um, okay. So this is a, a person's distance, and this is time. Pretty simple graph. But what it's supposed to model is uh, a student going uh, from their house to school. Okay. Uh, so they're, they're using different modes of, of uh, transportation, and this is what it looks like. Okay. So in a relatively long amount of time, they've gone not very far. Um, and then yeah, this section. So, how do you think the student might be getting to school? Yeah. Possibly like a skateboard. A skateboard? Yeah, you're slow, you can get hit a downhill. Where's yeah. the downhill? Like, when you hit a downhill, you go faster, so. Where, so where's he going faster? Uh, I'll do downhill. Well, I mean, on what part of the graph? On the, where it goes. This one, so it's really yeah. steep, right? The slope is yeah. really, is the slope big or small? Big, it's a big number, right? When, when your rise is big, and your run is relatively, relative to the rise, when your run is small, uh, you're going fast, right? The rate of change is quick, okay? Uh, so maybe he's skating along slowly. What's happening here? Maybe he waits. Maybe he what? Waits. Waits, maybe he waits. Waits to Takes a break to get some more. To get some second breakfast. Or you get okay. Or you get Starbucks. You get Starbucks. Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And then this isn't a hill, this is just a caffeine kick it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. 
Likes what he does. He does what he does. He just does what he does. Maybe right there, the neighbor's dog's chasing him. Then he hit the dog. So the important part here is that here he's going relatively slowly. Here he's how fast is he going? He's not going anywhere. He's got the. If you look at this section of the line, there is no change in the vertical. The vertical doesn't change at all. This, all this time is going by, but his, his rise versus his run, right? there's, no, there's no rise. The rise is zero, and the run is, well, we don't know. We didn't specify exactly. The time is passing, and he's not going anywhere. There's no change in distance, so he's not going anywhere. He stops before you make that comment. Hold on just a second. And here he's going fast because his slope <laughs> is big. Big slope, fast rate of change, small slope, uh, slow rate of change, yeah? Okay, what if he's driving and he stops at stoplight? Yeah. And he realizes he's late for school. So he just right floors up. Okay. After it turns green, let's be safe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's wearing a seatbelt. He's wearing a seatbelt and he waited until it turned green. Okay. So, yeah, maybe he's driving relatively slowly. He stops at a stoplight. He's late. He speeds up. Or maybe he's just walking and here. Waits for the bus. Waits for the bus. Bus takes him. These are all believable things that could have happened. Oh, but what we're going to learn here is <laughs> big slope, because we have a big rise and a relatively small run. Okay. Big slope means fast rate of change. Now, the rate of change doesn't have to represent speed. This could be. Um, that could be still time, but this is um, we can say like number of widgets. Do you know what a widget is? It's a what? Yeah. The thing on your phone? Yeah. If you have a non iPhone? iPhones don't have widgets. Oh, yeah. Only Android. Android phones have widgets, they're not well they're connected to apps, but they're not exactly apps. There are other like heads up things like yeah. well if you have a widget, you know what it is. A widget's just a general name for a, a thing, a doohickey, <laughs> what you would call it. Okay? Uh, and it, it, it does a thing. Okay? So a widget, just like an app, you know, app is a general name for a thing on your phone that it does a thing. A widget is different from an app, so it has a different name. A widget is just a thing and it and what does a widget do? Nothing. Whatever it's supposed to be, right? It could do lots of different things. You have different widgets to do different things. So you work in a factory and you make widgets. And here, now this isn't speed, right? This isn't me running. It's not distance versus time. It's widgets versus time. Okay. So here, how am I doing? Not too well. Not too well. I'm probably not going to. If I'm paid for a widget, I'm probably not going to make much money that day because I'm working really slowly, right? And then what am I doing here? You got done. Stop. Lunch, lunch, break, break. lunch break. Lunch break. My, or my boss is telling me I need to go faster or something. I'm not doing anything, right? Making no widgets. And then after this, I kick it into high gear. I have some Starbucks or something happens. I went to lunch and I just got all hyped up on the lunch. Yeah. And I'm making these things quick, the fast rate of change. Okay. So in the beginning, you didn't eat breakfast and you were hungry, so you didn't work that fast. Maybe I was sad about something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe your dog died and you found out at the hospital <laughs> that he wasn't actually dead. And now you're like, I want to get home and see him. That's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> you should write that down. Is there a creative writing class? Because it's going to win you. Creative writing class. Uh, slow rate of change. That's a word. Slow rate of change. So big slope. Big rate of change, or a fast rate of change, small slope, slow rate of change. And what kind of a slope is this? No slope. No. No. Zero slope. Zero. zero. The natural zero. difference between a zero slope and no slope. Yeah. A zero slope exists, and a no slope it doesn't. Okay? What kind of a line does not have a slope? It just doesn't exist. Now, this one has a zero slope. This is straight. They're all straight. This one's flat. 
as a zero slope. What? Straight up and down. A straight up and down line, okay, let's look at this line. Here's a point, and here's another point. <coughs> if we try to do rise over run here, we'll get, well, the rise will be how big? Zero. Zero over whatever the run is. Well, zero divided by anything is zero. Now let's go over to this one. Here's a point, and here's a point. What's the rise? I'm not sure. Rise is whatever the rise is. What's the run? I go up, and I don't go over at all. Zero. What's the problem with this? Can't be a slope. What? Me? Yeah, I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, can't be a slope. Shut up. This is a this is a slope, and it has no rise. Shut up, Steve. But if we look at slope is rise over run, and our run is zero, we can't divide by zero. Okay. Dividing by zero has no definition. It defies laws of mass. It breaks mass. We cannot divide by zero. Boom. Don't like this. Break this. Okay. okay. So this we would say is a zero slope. It exists. Zero is a well. Whether or not it's a number is kind of up for debate. The zero slope, this one would be no slope. It doesn't exist. Zero is a recognized number that we use. It's a quantity that we, that we recognize. But dividing by zero, there is no way to understand dividing by zero. It has no definition, at least not currently in 2013. Maybe in the years in the future, We'll fix it so that we can divide by zero, but we can't right now. Um, so yeah, so there's a zero slope and there's a no slope, and that's the difference. Horizontal, zero, vertical, undefined. Okay. So if we're talking about slope, we're also and we, and we give these these vertical and horizontal uh, quantities. We give them a, a value of some kind a label like time and number of widgets or distance in time or miles and gallons or whatever it is, okay? Let's just, as a last exercise together, if, if this were miles and this were gallons, okay? So, tell me about miles per gallon. Gallons of what? Yeah. Probably gas, probably not milk or something like that, right? You don't really care about miles per gallon. What about miles per gallon? What's a good miles per gallon? 42. What? 40. 40 is good. Very bad miles per gallon. 17. 17 is bad. Okay. So, big miles per gallon good. Low, small miles per gallon bad. Okay. So we would say good or bad here. Yeah. Bad. Bad. Small miles per gallon. Small slope. Here. Nothing. Nothing. Going. I hope you're not going anywhere right right because you're using some gas. And, or no, wait. Yeah, Maybe. you're using gas, but you're not going anywhere. So that's, I really yeah, hope you're not. I hope your car's not running. Are you locked your keys in your car with the, with the engine running? Yeah, that's bad. Uh, and here, good or bad? Good. 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 Getting lots of miles for relatively fewer gallons. Okay. Um, good. I'm gonna give you your homework. It's not gonna be a lot. You can probably get it done before the end of class. Yeah. Um.